Dave, take it away. Good morning. Um, first off, we'll just jump right into it. Um, Campus Cypress, uh, Tusa Compacta. Um, we have these uh, really nice plants here in a three gallon. Um, sure, we also got a seven out there, correct? Yes, we do. Yeah, so we got a nice crop of sevens too. Well, we have these threes here. You can see that uh, we're well over the spec of 18 inch. Uh, can't really call it a solid 24, but you know, we're calling it tipping 24. Um, this is more of an upright uh, kind of uh, dude, but we don't we don't trim it real hard. Uh, we found that people want that Hinoki Cypress. Not to like it too much when it's really hard sheared. Do here is just show you what's going to be happening. Uh, Calabrosis, which we basically have Carl Forster. And we have a, another one that's a newer one that will be released in the spring. Um, they get uh, cut back this time of year. The other grass, uh, we wait until uh, pretty much after January 5th. Come back. But the Calamagrasis can get a little slimy in the fall, get uh, a few issues from that. So we tend to like to get in there and trim those. Uh, this will be happening very shortly. Uh, so we just wanted to make you aware that, uh, you know, the foliage is really starting to, to brown out, uh, as you can see in the back. There and in the foreground, you can see uh, what the plant will look like here in another week or so. Uh, it just depends how quickly we can get the, the crews over there to free up the labor to do the process. So, and then uh, we'll continue to keep them on current availability, and that's what we'll show. So, uh, just stay tuned. Um, there's no way I can ship you a nice, lush green plant anymore. We're well past that date. Um, so, um, you know the foliage is going, so I don't. I don't think it's going to be too over there. But it's just an education thing we want to make you aware of. Hydrangea little quick fire is next. Um, they just uh, look exceptional out there. Uh, normally I wouldn't talk up paniculata hydrangeas too much this time of year, but uh, Cheryl uh, felt that uh, they got some great colors. Some that that foliage really darkens up on little quick fire and quick fire too, um, and it just it's just a big, thick, waxy leaf, and it's got that really nice foliage, and we still have blooms on there, you can see. So it's still a plant of really good interest. Um, as the fall progresses, uh, they'll, they'll start going dormant. They're not going to keep this foliage forever. But, uh, you know, a great plant. Uh, I love quick fire and little quick fire because it's extremely hardy. I mean, you can really push north with this plant. And, and as you can see there, it's, it's listed as its own three. You know, and uh, the, the blooms are white. And what's cool about this time of year, especially when you get colder weather, it really, the colder weather intensifies that color. Is uh, Ilex Blue Princess. Um, this is uh, by far your one of your greatest values in uh, holly, uh, whether you want a three or a five, or even a, a seven or bigger. Uh, you know, we can we can push up a little further north than we can with maids. So there's some, a lot of big maids out there, uh, but uh, in the princess, uh, we can do really well uh, with uh, selling this uh, this size here uh, because it's it's definitely full heavy plants. Um, remember to be successful. Uh, you don't need that many males. Um, matter of fact. You, know that there are a few male hollies in the yard, um, they, they will pollinate. It, it doesn't take a lot. I, I mean, it's been shown with survey types that you can have a pollinator um, within the area and do very well. It amaze us. Uh, this is little goblin orange. Uh, the leaves are starting to get loose and detaching, and it is, they're just loaded with berries. I mean, they are going to be striking. I think um, this should be a that you could talk about to any garden centers looking for some last minute stuff. Um, you know, it could even be considered for kind of a, a Christmas type of sale. Um, the, the berries are going to hang on there for a very long time, um, especially if you can get them kind of into a, a protected area, maybe where the birds won't pick at them too much, or wind and ice and snow won't beat them up. Um, so, uh, but you know, you don't want them inside, they, they'd be better outside, but 
kind of an unheated greenhouse or something like that where people can shop. Um, that would be a, a, just a great addition. So think about that. It's, it's probably not something that we normally would push uh, for this time of year, but uh, the crop did really well. We got really good availability. And uh, Matt, you would agree, we got just excellent berry set all the way across. It, it is not going to be to pull. We've got a really nice crop of three gallons here. You can see uh, we're, we're well above the 24 inch mold. Uh, matter of fact, Cheryl, I'm going to make an executive decision and let's list 24. So uh, we'll list it as a 2430. That'll better represent that we're well above the, the 24 inch. That'll help you a little bit there. And uh, we have uh, 1,100 of these available. We were very short last year, and we also took damage. Um, we had some in an exposed area. Uh, they were they were shipped in, and they weren't quite shut down. Um, these are shut down and doing good. Plus, you can see here from the background the extra precaution of having them in covered pot and pot. That should solve uh, any of the issues uh, from this spring. Blue Star uh, is next. Uh, real nice crop of Blue Stars. Uh, you can see here, uh, we were very short on this one this past uh, spring, uh, but we're going into this spring with really good numbers. Um, this was also uh, buying some liners, in some cases pretty expensive liners, but uh, we felt it uh, was very necessary to do another one of those key plants that a lot of people go after. They need them on their order, kind of a, a go-to plant in the juniper realm. Uh, 2,400 of those available. Uh, gold lace, jump into that. Uh, excellent crop of gold lace. Uh, with gold lace, we were also a little short last year. Um, we beefed up our production numbers, brought some liners in to help balance it out, and you can see here that has paid off as well. Uh, we've talked about brandy wine in the past. Uh, the picture on the left there is actually it was taken yesterday in the rain, so you can see it's still a pretty good color. Uh, how long the leaves will stay on there? Uh, sometime next week they'll probably be gone, but just to give you a reminder what this tree is. It's typical of a red maple, uh, has good fall color. Uh, some of the advantages of brandy wine, uh, it is a male selection, so there are no helicopters or seeds that you see in the spring. And it's also supposed to be resistant to leaf hopper. Remember, resistant means it kind of repels the insect. It's just still have an issue with the insects, just not as, as what it is on some of the other varieties. Um, Red maples are also good for wet areas, but they do not like to sit in uh, for it's a swampy area. So it needs to be medium, well drained, and somewhat wet. That'll give you maximum amount of growth. Uh, this one is extremely hardy as well, zone four to zone nine. It's just about as tall as it is wide. So you can see the height measurements here. This is a good overall plant. Next up is uh, ficus. I've had a couple questions on this. Steve, you sent this out the other day. Uh, did do a little bit of reading on it. The picture on the far right is actually supposed to be ripe. Um, ficus is similar to Budlia. If you don't give it any winter protection, it will die to the ground. It will come back up. Get the fruit, you're going to need to have it on older wood from what we've seen uh, with the way we're growing them. Uh, I did go out and look yesterday. There are some fruit out there that look like this. Uh, I have eaten them when they're green. Would strongly recommend against that. I did try this yesterday, and I still don't know if I'd recommend it, but I don't know if I was eating the right thing or not, but I want just be aware. Uh, it's a zone 5 to zone 9 plant. Um, if it's going to, you can see it gets relatively tall and wide. If you're going to put this in uh, northern climates, I would recommend a couple things you could do. One, if you have a plant this big, wrap it up in burlap, uh, protect the base, throw mulch around it. The other thing, if it's a shorter plant, you can gently bend the branches down and then just cover the entire thing with uh, soil or mulch and then come back in the sp spring and uncover it. If you do cover it with mulch, make sure you check it occasionally because obviously the mice are gone try and find it and they'll probably try and eat it as well. 
Uh, brown turkey is one of the uh, most hardiest of the figs. So if you want to grow a fig and have some, uh, obviously don't eat it the way I did. But uh, the other thing you can do with this plant, you can leave it as a container, put it in a garage or someplace where you give it more winter protection. Uh, Heuchera palace, we have about a This is a heuchera that we've had for a lot of years. It is a seedling grown variety, so there's a little bit of variation in it. Um, the reason for the two pictures on the um, right hand side, the picture to the left is uh, later in summer. You see it has a little more bronzier leaf. That's what it's going to do if you give it full sun. Uh, ideally, it, it's a partial shade to shade plant. Uh, picture on the right, you can see it's more of a dark purple. That's the way it's going to look typically if you give it a little more shade. Uh, extremely hardy, zone four to nine, uh, one to two foot high, a foot and a foot and a half wide. Like all heuchers, it does not like wet crowns, does not like wet feet, so it needs to be very well drained soil. And if you uh, put it in an area where it's at all wet during the winter months, you, it probably won't be there come spring, so keep that in mind. But this is a very tough uh, heuchera for tougher sites, uh, and it also gives you a dark purple color. Surprised we never really uh, did a whole lot with hydrangeas as far as uh, doing a format like this. Uh, Bloomstruck and Endless Summer both are in the Endless Summer program. Obviously, Endless Summer was the first plant. Both of these plants are what we call remontant or rebloom. Bloomstruck was, uh, came out several years after Endless Summer. Its main claim to fame is going to be that it's more heat resistant. The leaves aren't quite as big. It also, uh, as you can see in this picture here, it's got the dark red stems. That's one of the things you, when you're looking at it, you can see the difference. It's also going to be more of a, if you don't treat it, it's going to be more of a dark rose pink color as compared to endless summer, which is more of a pinkish color. The advantage or disadvantage of that, if you want a pink flower, obviously it has merit, but if you're going to try and change this with the aluminum sulfate, uh, I always call it purple. Uh, this is this one comes out more purple. You're not going to get a true blue, so it's going to be more in that purplish blue range, similar to what you see in this picture. Uh, this is probably one of the more hardy ones. It's zone four to zone nine, and all hydrangeas on the max of big leaves. You really need to give them afternoon shade, uh, or you be prepared to put some water on them. When you go through the farm and on a hot day, you see us, uh, we run syringe sets on them. And typically that's just to keep the leaves from uh, desiccating so bad that we get brown margins. And the summer was the first one that came out. Um, everyone I think knows what it is. We do put the aluminum sulfate on in the spring uh, prior to heating. We did do a fairly uh, trial again this year with coated material. See if there's going to be a, if we can get it a little bit bluer by putting some on the fall and putting some on the spring. So we'll see how that works. Um, pretty much everything else is the same as what Bloomstruck is. Um, Endless Summer is going to be one of the earlier ones that you see come out in the houses. Bloomstruck and Twist and Shout are some of the ones that take a little bit more heat to get them up to the same level. Uh, just want to remind everyone we've got uh, different that we deal with in the spring. We have the ones that we force for Mother's Day, and that's uh, ideally get them just a little past the stage, what you see here in the yellow summer in the right picture. You have a, a green bud that's starting to show a little bit of color. Uh, it takes about 12 weeks of heat. That's uh, real heat with heaters, not relying upon the sun to heat. Uh, we did go through last year, if you recall, we put a bunch of houses in with minimal heat. Minimal heat for these plants will turn heaters on at about 25 degrees, 28 degrees somewhere there, keep them above freezing. Once they start to break growth in the spring, then we keep them from uh, frost. Uh, obviously, we keep the houses covered. The white uh, plastic will eventually come off and have the clear on there. And then we also have some natural season. Those we will not release until later in the year. Typically, uh, like last year or this year, we started with the uh, off of S67, 2B, 2C, went into the Mother's Day crop and kept moving through the crops at that point. <laughs>